6 Ford E450. It's a uh, for those that want to know, it's a V10 engine, 6.8 liters, so it really drinks the gas. It's a retired U-Haul truck. It's 17 feet uh, at the roof line and then 14 feet long at the floor. And I built it out. I bought it from U-Haul and built it out. And so um, just to talk a, bit, a little bit about what's in here, it's pretty simple. I kept it as simple as I could keep it. All right, so I have a desktop computer. This is where I do my video editing for my uh, YouTube channel. And then I also have a laptop that I use for the stuff that is not so computer intensive or resource intensive. And then I also have a, uh, a tablet that I use for most of my uh, video, TV, YouTube watching. Um, and I just tether it all off my phone so I have an unlimited, unthrottled internet plan. And, and uh, yeah, it works pretty well. So I can tether all my devices off of it. And this is basically your entertainment center. Uh, actually, most of and most of my entertainment is all I pretty much just use on my tablet. It's a seven inch ta seven inch Android tablet, and I pretty much uh, watch everything I watch on here. Who's that? <laughs> Hello. I got eyebrows. What are you doing? Shooting the eyebrows. <laughs> Can you see him? Okay. All right. Uh, so I live with two pets in the rig here. This is my my, uh, my Great Dane Magnum. He's 170 pounds and uh, a very big baby. And then of course he's probably blocking the shot, so I'll show you. This is uh, my cat, and his name is Stanley, and he's a 20 pound uh, Maine Coon ragdoll, I think, or that's what I've been told. And he's not very happy because he didn't agree to be shot today on video, so he's being his usual self. But yep, these are the pets I live with, and um, they're a lot of fun. So it's all about simplicity with me. So I, I, you know, a lot of people will choose to build cabinets and whatnot. I just went with a cargo net that stores all kinds of uh, loose things on the wall, snacks, trash bags, vitamins, all kinds of stuff. And then if you look over here, I just did the same kind of thing over here. I think these are called uh, shoe, they're like shoe holders that you hang on a door. And so, yeah, I just decided to put like all kinds of stuff like spices, dogs medicines, cat medicines, uh, room deodorizer, just all kinds of loose ends, first aid, whatever else. I just did the same thing over here with, with, this, uh, with these pocket storage things. So it saved me from building cabinets, which is weight, and I also didn't want the complexity. So I know it doesn't work for everybody, but I wanted that simple approach. Up here on the uh, cab over area, this is kind of like what a class C will have is the cab over. And, and of course in a U-Haul, it's extra storage when you're moving. Uh, this is, um, I just have this, this is clean clothes, pillows, fresh water, some of the fresh water that I carry are in these jugs, towels, blankets, um, dog food, cat food, cat's dish where he eats is up here, uh, more storage in a plastic, t uh, plastic tub. Um, one of the places the cats sleep is up here, but cats sleep wherever they want. So he'll sleep here or often he'll sleep on top of me or next to me or in the driver's seat. So yeah, that's pretty much what's up here. So this is a, uh, a wood frame, I think it's called a gaucho style bed. I just, a lot of van dwellers have built things like this, so it's not really unique to me. But um, uh, I'll have to show it, but it, basically it will, the bottom will slide out and then the back will fold down. So uh, you actually can have a queen size mattress in here. But what I found is I tend to sleep on my side. So just sleeping on just the couch portion is plenty room for me. So just to save the trouble, I don't even fold. I obviously, I don't even put this down anymore. So I did it originally and then I did it for a few nights and then I stopped doing it. So I just sleep on this, what appears to be very narrow uh, couch here, but it works for me. Um, but anyway, this, this will, if you want it to, it'll slide out and then this back will fold down flat. And then this will also lift up to get to the electrical components that are under there, which are my AGM batteries, my inverter, the fuse panel, all that's underneath the bed here. Okay, so again, I don't do this every day because I figured out I don't need the width of the queen size bed like I thought I would, the lay on. But basically there's just a bolt latch here that comes down. And then these are just, um, they're alternated. So one piece is solid to the frame and then the next piece actually just slides. So this just slides out like this. And then when it's all the way out, there's a, the cross piece in the back that these, inter piece that these uh, alternating pieces are attached to. And so when it's all the way out, it actually creates, a, 
it creates a very sturdy frame. Uh, so this is just a memory foam mattress I bought from some uh, friend that didn't like it, didn't like the way it felt and the way it slept. So I bought it for like a hundred bucks and this is a $300 at least, three or $400 foam mattress, memory foam. And then I had read up on how to uh, work with these. So you just cut them with an electric carving knife and it creates absolutely no mess. It's the cleanest cut with an electric carving knife. So basically this back portion, this is a queen size mattress in total. This back portion is two thirds of the mattress and then the seat portion, the butt portion is one third. So I, that's what I did. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put it down. So I just have it held up with bungees, otherwise with your driving this would fall. So it's just held up with bungees and little eye hooks that I have on the wall, yeah, into the wall, the tongue and groove. What I actually use this for now is I just use this for storage. All my crap gets put up here on top of storage, so. This is another reason I did not uh, fold it out all the way either because it creates a lot less space. I'd have to put Magnum all the way down at the end of the cab to make room for this, so. I decided I'd rather have the space and not have to deal with that. This is my unfinished solar wiring. We'll talk about that. So if you really need a queen size bed, you can do it, believe it or not. And there you go. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it's a pretty nice big bed. Yep, and then you just throw the, throw the comforter over or your blankets or whatever you want and voila. Um, but and then I thought about the space again and it's like, if uh, if Magnum has an emergency in the night and needs to go out quickly in the middle of the night, since we use this door for ingress and egress, that would be more difficult with this in the way. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna leave it up. I'm fine sleeping on my side and then we have easy emergency access to this door. So if he has to go out. However, the one thing he does miss, he loves to be on it. So go. Oh, sleeping with you? No, he likes to sleep, yeah, see? Jeez, so I did good. this. I did this for a couple nights. I slept with him up here, and then we just shared the shared the bed because that's what he likes. But, but you have his own beds now. Yeah. So I have his own dog beds, which you probably will see. But I have his own dog beds that he sleeps on the floor right next to the edge of my bed. So he is still sleeping right next to me. It's just not on the mattress like this. And you know the whole thing about making your bed. If I did this every day, I'd have to make the bed like this every day, and I don't really want to do that every day. But you do travel alone other than your pets, so... Yeah, so it's I mean, not really a... Sleeping like that is not a big yeah, issue. Yeah, it's not an issue. So same thing, just strap it back into the eyelets in the wall. This was an example of using what you have. So I already have these, so that's why I'm like, right. I'll just use them. Even though, yes, you could get one big bungee. Again, it goes back to me being cheap. <laughs> I'm like, I already have them, why am I gonna buy them more? Somewhere here, there's an island, there it is. Just like that. On the floor and also on the cab over area above the cab, I just used this interlocking. I'm not greatly happy with the result, but it's an interlocking vinyl laminate. And so what I don't like about it is it has already started to separate a little bit. But yeah, they just lock together and they're waterproof. That's one of the reasons I went with it, so I didn't have to worry about uh, any kind of water damage or anything like that. So I have a 100 watt solar panel on the roof, uh, mono crystalline, as I recall. It's a Renogy panel because they're a great reputation. And then I bought it in a solar kit off of Amazon, so it came with a uh, 30 amp PWM charge controller. And I know that the uh, MPPT charge controllers are better and more efficient, but they're also, the PWMs are also a fraction of the cost. So since I was already exceeding what I had hoped to as far as building out this rig, as far as cost, I went with the cheaper version just to save a little money. And it seems to be working fine. So it tops, it helps top off the batteries every day. This is my voltmeter, ammeter, battery monitor, all encompassing. So it shows my uh, volts, uh, standing volt charge on the batteries. It also uh, shows the number of amps that are being used at any given time that are coming off the batteries. Um, and they're actually low right now because we are in a low sun area. So um, this is something I've learned. I'm always moving with my work. And so I have a battery isolator that typically does a lot of the bulk charging in my batteries. But since I've been sitting here for three days, I'm realizing that the minimal solar I have, if I was going to be camped and sitting still, would not be sufficient. But with working, moving, and driving all the time, um, 
I, I, I managed to do just fine with both solar and the battery isolator. This is underneath the bed. I have two 100 amp hour, 100 amp hour a piece AGM, sealed AGM batteries. That's why they can sit on their side. Um, and then this is a, this is a, just a fuse panel that I put in here and a, a negative ground strip. I had someone ask me about that, wondering what this is. This is a negative ground strip, so you have a common ground going to your battery. And then the fuse block for the things that need to be fused. Uh, so for safety, I try to have a lot of cutoff switches in my electrical. So this is just a knife switch is what it's called. And so this way, if you need to quickly disconnect your electrical to service or if you have an emergency, you just flip this down and it allows you to disconnect all your electrical in the vehicle instantaneously. So everything is uh, isolated. And then I also have cutoff switches like this also underneath my hood for my main starting battery and a similar kind of cutoff switch for the battery isolator. So basically you can control so that you can sever the current when you really need to in a pinch or for service. Uh, so I just have a Best Tech. It's a 1000 watt modified sine wave inverter. Yes, I know the pure sine wave inverters are better, um, but this has worked just fine for everything that I run. And I use a, uh, a 120 volt refrigerator, like a dorm refrigerator that runs off of this. All my charging devices run off of this. Um, yeah, and I've had no issues whatsoever. So the modified sign has been fine for me. So, and it was uh, obviously uh, quite a bit less money, so it was a good savings that way. So I have, uh, I get a lot of questions about how do you keep cool, how do you keep specifically your animals cool. Um, this is only for when I'm stationary, but I'm stationary probably 50% of my day. So I have two window air conditioners on in my bulkhead wall here that you see, one on either side of the door. I started with one, but when we hit a really high 90, 100 degree hot spell some weeks back, I found out it wasn't quite enough to keep up or to reclaim the temperature that had been lost as the, as the box heated up. I do have insulation in here. I have one inch of poly iso insulation in the walls, two inches of poly iso insulation in the roof and the ceiling but you still have to really have some kind of energy resources to reclaim the temperature loss that you get with a lot of heat. So I put in a second air conditioner oh, a couple weeks later during the, when we were having that hot spell. So between the two of these, it really keeps the place chilled down on really hot days. And these will both run, believe it or not, these will both run off of my generator. So I have a portable inverter generator which is uh, 1,700 watts or 2,100 watts surge. And so both ACs will actually run off of this uh, without a problem. And I can still also run additional things like my uh, four or three-stage battery charger or run my desktop computers. I can, I can put quite a load on this and it handles it just fine. And then uh, for heat in the winter, I just used a Mr. Buddy heater. Everybody's probably seen these because almost everybody uses these. So these are pretty common. And then I have a 20 pound tank for that. Uh, so I went with the Max Air fan for an exhaust fan. It's uh, got the thermostatic controls on it, of course. And I get a lot of questions about why I have exposed wiring. It goes back to simplicity. All the wires in this rig that I built uh, are exposed just for easy access. And in case there's a problem, it's easy to troubleshoot the problem if you're not having to dig behind your walls for your wires. Uh, and I also have the LED light strips, so it helps light up the cat or light up the living area. So why did you choose wood cladding? <laughs> yeah, so wood cladding is heavier and I, people probably wonder why. I just like the look of it and I actually didn't even finish the edges because I ran out of time before I had to move into it and then once I moved into it I didn't care anymore about finishing it but um, I went with the wood cladding because I liked the way it looked. I, and that's one thing that you decided you wanted, you didn't yeah. care if it was heavy or not. I didn't care, well because I knew the truck was more than capable of carrying the weight and even with everything I put in here, uh, everything, you know, all my personal belongings and the dog and me and everything. It's only uh, 2,000 pounds of weight that I've added to the original weight. So this is 8,500 pounds empty. So with everything in it, it's 10,5, 10,500 pounds. And so I just decided that this was a weight concern that I, I didn't care about because I felt that this, this was my home and I wanted it to be comfortable and I liked the look of it. Uh, so number one question I always get uh, is about where do you go to the bathroom? So being in a city, there's a lot of 24 hour places that are available, restaurants, grocery stores and whatnot, but you still will need something for emergencies. 
So this is just the Bob Wells uh, system, which is just, it's a bucket. There's pipe insulation, which provides a soft seat. This is completely sanitary, so don't be grossed out. There's nothing in here. This is actually just for storage. So you put everything in here. These are bags. You just uh, double up a bag, and it'll go around here and do what you got to do, and you tie it off, throw it away, just like you have to do when you have a big dog, or just like what you have to do when you have to deal with baby diapers. It's, we all, everybody does it. You got to talk about it. Uh, and then if you're just number one, then that's just a jug. So yeah, it's pretty simple stuff. Um, and this is completely sanitary. There are people that use these for storage too. So you could actually put stuff in here for storage when you're not using it. But yeah, it's just for emergencies and it works pretty well. So down here, I also have additional fresh water jugs. Uh, this is what I, the, the individual water jugs like up on the cab over and these, I use for drinking water and for water for the pets. This tank is a seven gallon that's also fresh water, but I just use it for hand washing, dish washing. So this water is actually, I don't ever drink this water. And the reason why is because, um, I don't know, I, I, it's just not, it's not completely sealed and I just, I don't know. I just feel like I don't really want to drink that. So it's just for hand washing and dish washing. And then I just use an old uh, cat litter container with this non-pressurized drain hose, flexible drain hose, and this captures the gray water. And then I just throw this out each day. I only use between a half gallon, usually about on average about a half gallon of fresh water a day with my sink. So it's not very much and then I just toss it out every day. I have a water pump here. It's a 12 volt um, on demand pump and I just flip it on right here and that runs the water. So I'm using a 3.2 cubic foot uh, dorm type refrigerator. It does run on 120 volts. It's not a 12 volt system. I did a lot of research on the 12 volt refrigerators and even the dual zone ones. And what I found it appeared is that the, true, the dual zone 12 volt systems are not usually that great at actually keeping things frozen in, a, in addition to having a separate refrigerator zone. So I went with this system. Other people have done this too. There's other channels that have talked about these. Um, so it's a full, or it's a refrigerator and then it has a full separate freezer for keeping ice and ice cream solidly frozen, which is what I wanted. So it, it's worked out pretty well. It uses about four amps uh, once an hour for maybe 10 minutes or so, about an hour. And again, since I drive a lot, I don't have any problem even with this running that often. I don't have any problem with it keeping the batteries topped off. This is a hand washing sink. Uh, other people that live in vehicles have covered these before, um, but it's a hand washing sink I got off Amazon. Uh, it works off of the 12 volt pump we showed a minute ago, and it's really nice. It's compact, but it's big enough to still do everything you need to do without taking up a huge footprint. To the left of the sink, I have the cooktop, and this is one of the last things I did, and so it's kind of crude because I just used scrap wood. I was getting near the end of my build. I was running out of time. I had to get moved out of the place I was in where my lease was running out. And so it was kind of just, I just kind of threw it together crudely with scrap wood, but it works. So it didn't really matter to me. I don't mind. So this is just held up with a bolt lock, slide bolt lock. Uh, so I just uh, undo the bolt here and it just comes down. And then I just have a simple bar and this uh, holds it up and it just connects to these screws. There's uh, holes in the bottom or at the top of this, this prop. So it's just a prop is all it is. It's just a little wood prop. And then it's just like that. And it will hold plenty of weight. So there's no concern of it collapsing. And then the uh, propane cook, this is just a camp stove cooktop. So I actually started out with a, um, a full propane cooktop and oven. It was like a full camp stove. It was about this big. And I bought it and then I went to put it in and I'm like, this is too much. This is too much of a footprint and I don't really cook that much. So I sent it back to Amazon and just got a, just a regular old propane cooktop like this. So you guys have all seen these before. These are not, there's nothing special about these. If you ever camped out and cooked at a camp outside, um, these are just in here to help prevent rattling. Uh, then you've seen these before. There's a little grill that comes out of the bottom of here. Uh, and then there's a uh, cooktop grill that goes on the inside. I forgot to do that. So again, I don't cook that much, and so that's why this may seem like a lot of work to set up for most people. But I only cook once a day, if that, and so I just don't need this out and down all the time. That's why I have it set to fold up against the wall. Because I'm not one of those people that's going to spend hours and hours cooking in the kitchen. So pretty much all I use this for is to, you know, 
cook up brats or cook up eggs in the morning. That's, I mean, that's really about it. So in here like this, the arm goes in the side and then you hook one of those little green canister bottles, propane canister bottles to it, which I showed filling on my channel, uh, how to fill those. Or you can, uh, you could get an adapter and hook it to like a 20 pound tank that you keep on the floor. So it's pretty simple, but it works. It does, it does exactly what I need to do. many dogs they get separation anxiety and Great Danes tend to get it a lot. So um, Magnum, Magnum does get separation anxiety so if I'm going to be away from the rig for more than just a few minutes at a time like two three hours or something like that I constructed this uh, fold-out kennel that actually is collapsible you can see it was collapsible against the wall and I just constructed this with scrap wood so it's nothing special. In fact, these rails here are the rub rails that came out of the inside of the U-Haul truck. So these just connect with hinges, basically, and the hinges are just slightly backed out, and that's what allows them to be connected without them being too tight. So it just connects out like this. You just throw the hinge, in, the hinge pin in like that, and then the face goes on. Now he does have dog beds when he's in here, but his dog beds are sitting outside at the moment. So that's why he's looking very confused. He's like, I don't have anything soft to lay on. But anyway, then this front panel goes on the same way. It's hinged at the side, then it swings shut, and then it's hinged at the corner. So these are just pins that pop in. And then basically with his dog beds in there, I'm not cruel, he does have dog beds. With his dog beds in there, this keeps him fully contained until I get back. Um, and it is four by four by four and a half. So it's good size. I mean, it's huge, so. That's a great setup because you know, big dogs like that, they can cause havoc in yes. small spaces, so. He, yeah, so. If he gets really anxious, he will. He can. He can just start destroying everything if he wanted to. So this keeps him contained. He feels safe this way. And then when I come back, he's just chilled out, laying on his beds, just relaxing until I get back. There for just a second. Come right. Come right there. Right there. If you just hold the scholar. <laughs> And this is just where I keep my dirty laundry before I make it to the laundromat. That's what we do when we're on the ride. We use laundromats and garbage. Pretty much it. Pretty simple. So this space back here looks like a porch, what people usually call it as a porch. The reason for this is because I actually still work and so this is for cargo deliveries. So I specifically built the bulkhead wall where it is, a couple, two and a half, two and a half or so feet in. I built it where it is because I wanted to be able to store cargo back here that I get paid to deliver. And so this allows me to do that. And then it keeps the animals safely contained and keeps the living area separate with the privacy tinted glass uh, so that they're contained in there while there's cargo being put in and out of the back of here. So when I'm doing cargo deliveries, then I just scoot this stuff that you see here, I just scoot it inside into the back corner and that opens up this whole area for me to, to earn a living. So I get asked often, what's the hardest thing about living this way? Um, it's kind of a multifaceted thing, but I'll be quick. Uh, one would be the animals. Um, I knew going into it, it'd be a little bit more of a challenge, but you have to be honest with yourself about it. And I think a lot of people want to gloss over it. If you have animals and you're in any kind of an environment where there's a great temperature variance, either hot or cold, you have to think about how am I going to compensate for that? What are my energy sources in order to keep them comfortable? And then the other one, I don't know that it applies to everybody that lives this way, but me living in the city, uh, it's you have to work in not feeling disconnected. So I still have the same friends and family. I still see the same friends and family. But something about living this way, I encountered a sense of disconnect, a community disconnect. And so I have to work at, work harder than I did living in the Sticks and Bricks. I had to work harder at reconnecting with people and feeling like I was a part of a community since I don't have neighbors. Um, and so that was a that was an adjustment, but I figured out how to work through that. So it's, it's turned out pretty well. Okay, so then when I am dry camp somewhere, um, when I'm not in the city, I don't do this when I'm in the city, but when I'm not in the city, like I'm at a campground right now, then um, I can just leave this back door open. Back up, buddy. I can just leave this back door open and this door will lock. And so what I'll typically do is I'll just lock this and I'll just leave the back up. And so then this does serve as a porch when I'm camped out like this. Uh, but if I'm in the city, then uh, this gets closed, obviously, when I'm going to and from deliveries and things like that. 
And that's pretty much it. With the door down, it's completely stealth in the city, which is important. And uh, no one looks at it twice. They just, it just looks like a work truck. So the one tip I would give for people that are considering uh, living this way in any way is don't overthink this stuff. Don't, people spend far too much time, I think, stressing about the details. How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do that? How am I gonna street camp in the city or anything else? If you want to do something bad enough, you'll figure out a way to do it. It's that simple. My name is Jay, and my YouTube channel name is The City Nomad, and it specifically is covering how you do all this in, a, in an urban environment. So uh, come visit the channel if you like, and check it out.